Hello and welcome to my channel on the hood crochet where we talk about wearable crochet style and today we're talking about Annie's kit clubs. I do a video every month about the new kit that Annie sends me and we're in a collaboration with each other to show what this beautiful Moroccan tiles afghan looks like. This is the holiday spice version of that particular Moroccan tiles uh, afghan and it is absolutely gorgeous the colors are Christmassy but you know in my home these are the colors that I use in my living room so I'm really excited to have this I can't wait till I finish it so I have completed kit number five I've completed kit number five and this is what I'm working on this time these are the squares that are around the edge of the uh, center square of the afghan and those are made this month and I'm finished with those and let me show those to you I have made three of these and these are actually square number two they're labeled square number three in the booklet so you might want to look at that Annie's kit clubs but <laughs> it's not hard to figure out which square is which and this is square number three and um, it's a absolutely gorgeous mosaic around the edges of these squares and what uh, what you're really doing is making this piece right here and then you're adding all of the mosaic around the edge and since we've done this before we made four of these last month and this had the mosaic around the edge in different colorway but it was also done in mosaic crochet and so after you do this a few times you get the hang of it now I have done that four times and then I have six squares that I made this month. I made three of each one of these. So three of these and three of these. So it it takes a little while to make them because I always use the video. I have become very accustomed to having the video and that helps me a lot because I don't have to guess where I am. The written pattern is uh, very detailed and I love written patterns. I've always used written patterns always always and Videos are, are kind of new to me as far as using them to make a project But in this case the designer does a very nice job Creating the video and then putting it out there so that you can follow her you can pause it It's very easy to follow and she takes you through the center square now and then she just refers you back to uh, the previous video for the mosaic part of the the tile which is this part around the tile this this part right here from here to the corner all the way around so that's considered the most mosaic part of that particular square now I have a couple of things I wanted to suggest and first of all to watch the video <laughs> it's very important to know where she's going with her hook a lot of times I'm kind of guessing I'm not really sure and so after you've done a few of these it gets a little bit easier you kind of know where the designer's going she's very very good very thorough and very slow so she doesn't speed up or try to lose you like some people that do tutorials are not really sure where you are but I think it's a good thing that she goes slow and she wants you to learn how to do what she's trying to do and she does some new stitches to me which is uh, in this particular one is the split front post treble crochet cluster and I th oh, whoa what is that that is huge well when she does it it makes it so easy and you watch her and Video and then you know how to do it and after about the second or third square you are on your way you don't even have to watch her anymore but I do follow the directions because much of my crocheting is done in front of the TV so I try not to get too uh, wound up in what's on TV because I can't do the mosaic part I can do the other part just fine but the mosaic I have to really really think of how many stitches I'm going to always keep up with how many stitches you are working with and that is one tip that I'm giving you one tip always keep up with the number of stitches if it says you were supposed to to single crochet 11 stitches then you should single crochet 11 stitches if you have 12 stitches there and you don't want to go back you can decrease two together and I have done that a time or two just so my stitch numbers will be perfect I'm not uh, really fond of stitch counts but you have to do them when you're using mosaic crochet you can't just wing it and 
put in an extra stitch or two here and there because it doesn't work. So what I suggest is that you keep track of the number of stitches you're supposed to have. The designer tells you that in the video and you can also keep up with that on your instructions. Now another tip that I'll give you, this is what I do and I've been crocheting for 40 years, okay, for 50 years, however long, I don't know, but I've been crocheting, I've been crocheting a long time. And what I do is when I come across a very long description of what you have to do on a certain part of the square, I will write along the edge all of my notes right there. I write along the edge just like that so that I know the sequence of events and I don't have to read through that every time. Now I read through it the first time and then in red along the side, I will first of all, I'll write the name of the color of the yarn that you're working with on that particular round. So I'm not making a mistake using the wrong color. So I write the color name at the top and then along the side I write a kind of a synopsis or a, a, a outline of what the directions are telling you to do. And that'll make it a lot easier. That's what I did. Um, I, you know, every time it's described how to uh, go down to the row in, uh, below you to pick up a stitch, then it's a long explanation. And I shorten that to just two letters. And so that, that's how I do it. And then when I come across that, I know that it's that particular stitch and I don't have to read through every, every piece of it. Um, and I can also put notes to myself about how many stitches I need to do in a certain spot. So that would make it a lot easier, especially for a beginning crocheter, so that you know exactly where you're going. But if you're watching the videos, you'll have no problem at all. And honestly, I watched the video on both of these squares a couple of times. I just turned it on and let it run and I was working along with her. And that way I wasn't making a mistake. So that's how I did these two squares. And I did six squares, but I did two different ones. And really enjoying this particular kit. Again, these are the ones that I made this time in this kit and next kit I will be working with these other squares. There's some other squares that this kit just arrived yesterday. I was so excited to see it because I'm finished with kit number five and I wanted to make my video and show y'all what I've done and then I will start on my new kit. This is kit number six and I'm really excited about this and these are the colors that are in the new kit. These are a little bit different. Uh, there's a pink in there. I don't remember seeing the pink color but um, you know, I know I may have seen it before, but I don't think so. I think it's a new color for me. And um, again, these are the squares we're doing in kit number six. So they don't give you too much to do. You're not overwhelmed when you get a kit. It's kind of fun. I mean, here is a picture of the first, you know, the first square, square number five. It's got some pinks in it. It's a beautiful, actually, it's paprika. I think it's red and pink together. And then here's another one that is done with pink and red. So I just can't wait. I'm excited to get started on my new uh, kit. Now, before I do that, I want to tell you because the last video that I did, I showed the large square, which is the first piece or the first couple of kits that you do. Um, you make a lot of the afghan. You make a lot of it. And I noticed in the video, it looked ruffled. Um, it, I hadn't really done anything to it except crochet it and put it down. I hadn't really even tied in the ends on the back. Look at all the ends I have left <laughs> to do. But I knew that I probably should stop at this point and uh, block this. And so let me, let me show you how I blocked it and then I'll be right back. Today we're going to look at how to block the Annie's Moroccan Tiles Afghan. I'm going to block this square before I get much farther on it. It's going to be 28 and a half inches according to the directions here. And if you look in the upper left corner right there, it says that you'll be the square with the border 28 and a half inches. So that's both directions and I've measured it out and I needed um, all of these squares on my blocks and you just put these together like this 
they fit together and you just press them down in between the squares and they they lie they lay flat and that way you can lay your square on top of them and that way you can get this blocked and the reason I'm blocking it is honestly because it is very wavy um, I'm sure that's a function of how I crocheted it <laughs> more than likely but I'm hoping to get this into shape and kind of get rid of some of this extra uh, bulk in the middle. I mean, I'm not going to take out stitches or anything. I'm just going to block it so that the edges will lay down flat and the center will lay flat before I add any more pieces to it. Now, I've already crocheted the next set of this next set of squares and you saw those those were these and they're going to go up here but I'm going to block these separately they're seven and a quarter inches across and if they measure that I haven't measured them yet but if they measure correctly I probably won't block them but right now I'm going to block this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin it to the measurements that it's supposed to be and I'll be right back so these are the little pins that I use right here these are the pins I used to pin the square to my pads and here they are right here the pads and I've actually measured it across and I measured it exactly at 28 inches and 28 and a half excuse me and all the way over here to the other end and so you can see that it's measured 28 and a half inches and I did that both ways both this way and this way and what I did was I measured, I actually attached the square here, and then I attached it over here at 28 and a half inches. Then I worked my way down to each corner from there. And then at the same time, right in the middle of that, I took this measurement from here to here to make sure I was going correctly. But you know, if you use the lines on these little pads, it makes it much easier. See, I ran this along one of the lines here, and it made it much easier to lay it out in a big square. So there it is. I haven't, um, I haven't steamed it yet, but I'm going to steam it, and that way, this right here will lay flat, and it's already starting to lay flat, which I was a little concerned about. But I did the right number of stitches, and the uh, gauge was correct so it should work out just fine so now I'm going to steam the square these are the knitting blocks that I use I've always used these these are humble crafter I, uh, I bought these off of Amazon and they've been wonderful I bought actually two boxes and one box is it looks like it's um, 36 inches with all the squares put together I have three six nine squares in each box and I have two boxes, so I can actually pretty much cover this whole table with a knitting blocks. They're called knitting set blocks, but they're actually for crochet too. So that's what I use to lay the square onto right here. And they come with these little pins. I think I showed you those already. They come with the pins, so I just pinned it along the edge. There are easier ways to do this. You can buy these uh, pins that are already set there may be five or six in a row and you just push them down onto the edge of your fabric and that way it's a lot faster but I've just always used the singular pin so that's what I've done here and now I'm going to start to steam so I'm using a really nice uh, steam iron here that I've had for many years the Rowenta and it you can hear the steam coming out and I'm not touching the iron to the uh, to the afghan i'm not touching it i'm just rolling it over the top very very slowly and letting the steam penetrate the yarn just very slowly and this way i'm going to wet the afghan it's basically going to be a little bit damp and i'll leave it here for probably overnight i probably won't bother it until then and then i'll come back down and we'll take a look at it see what it looks like but i'm excited i hope that the middle of it uh, lays flat a little bit better than it has been but i think it's just a function of the yarn and all the different kinds of stitches that were used here um, but my gauge was correct as I said so I'm hoping that that should take care of it so here we go and one of my subscribers suggested that I do this it's such a great suggestion before the afghan gets so big that I'll have to do a half at a time I really didn't want to do that I think once I get this done the squares that I'm making are just the right size so I probably won't have to uh, steam them 
So I'm going to walk around the other side and steam the rest of it, and then I'll Here's be Here's a quick look at the afghan after I've steamed it. And it looks like it has kind of flattened out quite a bit around the middle, which is my biggest concern. So I've had nothing to be concerned about. It looks great and it's still wet. I can feel that it's uh, fairly damp. So I'm going to leave it overnight. And then tomorrow I will come down and unpin it and I'll show it to you then. I hope you enjoyed that. That was um, just something I knew that I could do and it helped so much. The, the square looks so much better. Look how flat it is now. In, uh, if you'll follow those directions that I gave you, yours will look just like that. It, it was very ruffled, and I was a little worried about how it was going to look. But look how flat it is. It's very, very nice. It turned out perfectly uh, when, I, uh, when I blocked it. And I blocked it with steam. I blocked it with a steam iron. I didn't have a special steam machine or anything. But if you have one, that's even better. But I did pin it down and I, I, I pinned it to the exact measurement that it needed to be. And so I kind of made it, made it fit and then I steam blocked it. But it looks absolutely beautiful. It's absolutely, and it's soft too. It's a little bit softer now that I've steam blocked it. So um, you might want to do that before you move on. This is a good place to stop right here after you've done the center square and some of the outer sides of it right there. I wouldn't go any farther than that, and you could even block it when you get to this point right here, to that red line. You could probably block it there if you wanted to, but um, I waited a little bit longer thinking that it was going to flatten out, and it did not. It needed to be blocked, so I blocked it, and now I'm very, very happy with this beautiful, beautiful afghan. Look at that, how gorgeous that is. It's so interesting to look at. Even Mr. On the Hook looks at it, and he says, I can't believe you did that. It looks so complicated, but honestly, if you do it a piece at a time, like they do, they send you the kit every month, and it makes it so much easier. So I'm looking forward to starting on kit number six, but this is a video about kit number five. So I hope you're doing well. If you want to um, start a Annie's Hit Kit Club subscription, you can go down in the description box and my link is there. And I wish you would use that if you're going to start one so that they'll know that you found Annie's Kit Clubs through me. And I would really appreciate that, especially for my viewers and my subscribers and my community members as well. So be sure you use that link down below to sign up and you'll get 50% off your first kit. So when you see me again, I'll be talking about kit number six. So join me and we'll find out what's on the hook.